Okay, <clears throat> so what this video is going to show you is how to core a tree using the Hagloff increment bore. Um, in another video, I showed you how to assemble this Hagloff, uh, so I will do that real quick right now. Um, again, for those needing a recap, remember this blue thing is actually the handle. In the field, whenever you're coring a tree, um, the most delicate piece of this instrument is actually the extractor or the tool, okay? So you always want to store this, um, this, the spoon, excuse me. So you always, the extractor or the spoon. So you always want to store this in a place you're not going to step or out of the way, all right? So I have my handle. I assemble it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I picked this tree for just uh, educational purposes, not necessarily because this is an ideal tree for research, but um, when you're coring a tree, you always want to select the ideal tree for whatever signal you're looking for. So if it's a climate signal, um, you know, if you're looking for temperature or drought or something like that, make sure you're coring a tree at a location that is appropriate and a species that is appropriate. This is a ponderosa pine tree. Um, for this uh, purpose, it will do uh, great. So what you want to do, ideally, is you want to get the center of the tree, okay? That's the best, uh, from bark to center will be the entirety of the tree's life. It's the most uh, data you can have. It's the ideal condition. The center of the tree is sometimes in the center of the tree. Uh, sometimes based on growth, right? There might be variation in ring widths, which kind of then push the pith or the center of the tree off a little bit. This tree is actually tilted a little bit, okay? And angiosperms versus uh, <clears throat> gymnosperms, so like oaks, maples, and hickories versus like pine, spruces, firs, they actually have reaction wood differently. So I know for uh, if I, a fact, if I, if I core perpendicular to the angle, I will re avoid that reaction wood. And you want to aim so that the shaft of the bore is as perpendicular to the tree or the, 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 the trunk of the tree as possible. You don't want to be sort of coring down at an angle or up like this. You also, and I'll change my perspective here just a little bit, you don't want to go in like this or in like that, right? You want to make sure you're going as close to the center as possible, gauging by any kind of tilt or growth um, abnormalities, okay? So based on this, I'm looking up at the top, I'm looking at the base, I'm trying to avoid thick pieces of bark because that's just going to um, gum up the inside of my bore. And I think right about here with that angle is about good, right? So again, I try and get it as perpendicular to the ground surface, or excuse me, to the, the trunk as possible, parallel to the ground surface, right? Um, and I just start slowly keeping as steady of a grip as I can. I don't want this end, the three thread end, to wobble as it's going in, okay? I want to keep it as steady as I can, and I just slowly push as I turn, and eventually you will feel that three thread sort of catch with the wood and the bark, I'm watching for my shirt, and I kind of felt it right there. See, it's in. Right, so you can actually still see a little bit of the thread hanging out, but for the most part it's in, right? And you, you want to make this as smooth of a stroke as possible. You don't want to make this thing wobble because it actually is flexible slightly. It will give a little bit. So you're going in. Um, you don't have to go in super fast, okay? But the faster and the quicker the better because what's going to happen actually is this tree, you know, you're, you're giving it an injury. It's going to start flowing resin down to where um, the hole you're drilling into it is. It's also going to naturally kind of compress. The weight of the tree is going to compress on this bore. Now this is a softwood. Um, pines are softwoods. So <clears throat> actually it's pretty easy to core. It's a pretty smooth process. It's not um, giving me too much trouble here. Now what I do is I go a few turns in once it's caught with the wood and I get the extractor or the spoon out and I kind of measure. Okay, so. The um, spoon or the extractor is the same length as this br uh, black shaft that's going in. So it's about here. And now I have about this, in theory, about this much uh, wood of core, core in here. I check. Ooh. Yeah, right? So about the same amount is sort of stuck on the other end. So we're good. No um, jamming is going on. Everything going on inside is all hunky-dory, right? So we keep going in. Now this isn't that big of a tree. It doesn't have that big of a um, diameter at breast height. So really you only need to the pith or halfway through. 
and I have definitely gone more than halfway through the tree. So what I'm going to do, again, is to remember, as a, a, a recap, the further this goes in, the more the core is sort of going into this shaft area. So when I stick this in, it's going to hopefully go underneath the core. These teeth are going to grip it. And I'm then going to be able to back this borer out, right? So I kind of, oh, I feel it. It's, I feel the core against the spoon, put all the way in. And now the extractor is completely underneath the core. The core is now um, on top of the extractor inside the shaft, but it's still attached to the wood, the, the tree, right? Um, so I back it out one to two turns. And now what I've done is because this extractor was gripping that core when I backed it out, it broke the core out from the middle of the tree, right? So now what I can do is hopefully pull out a core for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come and get a close up here. So bear with me. See how you can see? Hopefully, let me focus. Ah, oh, it's not focusing. Kind of focusing. But you can see the core is coming out, right? So I'm going to actually put this back. Let me take this core out the rest of the way. Now what I should have already had ready um, is my straw, okay? And the straws are used for storing. But I got my straws here, put one. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna put this, uh, the pieces of bark, the end of that core, in the paper straw, if it'll work with me. The bark is getting stuck. There we go. And I just pull it out, okay? And I push the straw down the core as it's coming out so that it then stays in the core, or excuse me, in the straw for transport. And there's the end of it. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm excited because I'm off the pith by maybe a year, maybe not at all. I'd have to sand it and see. I may have pithed this thing. So, um, what I'm going to show you next um, is uh, how to get the, the core fully, or excuse me, the bore fully out of the tree and then stored and um, disassembled and, and, and stored for transport. All right. In a different video, I'll show you up closes of, of cores and tree rings um, that we've processed. So again, you just keep backing it out. And even though I've stopped to chat and gab and stuff like that, um, it, it hasn't compressed enough right where I'm having an issue. If this may have been, you know, like a, a maple or an oak, a hardwood, I may have wanted to get that borer out quicker. But it comes right out. And then what I always do is I look down the shaft of the borer to make sure I can see outside. Or, you know, see all the way down. There's no, there's no jamming. It was a little piece of bark and it's gone. Okay, so I undo the hatch, um, put the shaft down in the handle, put the extractor down in the shaft, and we're all good to go to the next tree. Thanks for watching.